Hello and welcome. Today I'm so excited to finally, after three years, <laughs> show you how to make chicken puffy tacos. If you're interested to make what well, you guys just saw in that thumbnail, please keep watching because you're in for a really delicious treat. And you know, I got you hooked up. Look in the description for the full recipe. I'm so happy you guys are joining me today because these puffy tacos we're about to make are divine. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna have to grab your favorite pan. And if you hear a lot of rowdiness, it's because I live in a rowdy neighborhood. <laughs> Boy, <Woo! wait. laughs> so add a little bit of oil, whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay. And once your pan is hot enough, we're going to go ahead and add our onions. Don't get scared. I've updated the way that I give you the recipes and in the description, you're going to have all the information you need and that's how we're going to roll. Yeah. See, that's a better sound than having to hear all these cars and all these air conditioners or even me talking. Let's listen. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and make a little spot. We're going to add our garlic. And yes, I'm using my hands because they get kind of stuck in these little dishes that I try to show off for you guys, you know. <laughs> Give that a good little mix. And now I'm going to add my shredded chicken. For this part, all you want to do is sprinkle a little bit of salt. Okay. And if you guys don't know how to do a boiled chicken or a shredded chicken like this, um, I'm going to put a link in the description where I show you guys how I boil my chicken. So just a little bit, not a lot. So all we're going to do is we're going to continue sauteing this for another minute. We don't want this part to get crispy for the tacos we're making, okay? And a lot of you guys say, oh my gosh, I want to cook, but that's just so time consuming. If you set all the ingredients aside and follow the steps just like I did, it's going to take you a lot less time than I actually spent here on the video to, um, to make these recipes. So give yourself about 20 minutes so you can prep all your things and then give yourself 20 minutes so that you can cook most of the things that we cook it's done in less than 30 minutes so you guys know i i have a busy life homeschooling my children is like the one that takes up the most time for me you would think youtube but youtube is it comes easy for me they say when you find something you love like it's not even work so youtube i love you <laughs> okay so once we get that we're going to go ahead and add our tomatoes Our Anaheim pepper. So once you've added those ingredients, you want to add about three fourths to a cup of your chicken broth. If you guys don't have time to boil your chicken and you guys tend to just buy pre-made things at the store, don't worry, you can still do this. Get yourself a rotisserie chicken, get yourself a, a chicken broth, a can of chicken broth, and you guys should be able to get to this point, okay? I hear you parents. Some of you guys don't even want to look at the kitchen when you get off of work. I feel you on that one. Especially if the teenagers don't clean up. Yeah, teenagers, if you're watching, you better help your parents clean up, kids. Pick up after yourselves. Okay, and while this is like this, I'm going to go ahead and add my uh, my chicken uh, bouillon. And if you guys don't like the chicken uh, bouillon or anything, you can just kind of flavor it with your salt or whatever um, 
flavoring that you like, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and cook this until the tomatoes turn soft. So I'm thinking about four, four or so minutes, so I'll see you guys then once the tomatoes get really soft. You know I have to hide them for my family. They get picky. We've been particular about tomato, so I'll see you guys in four minutes. While our chicken is cooking, I wanna take the time to thank the Santa Cruz Chili and Spice Co. because they sent me a lovely uh, package with a variety of their products, and you guys know my enchiladas are not the same if I don't use that chili. So I'm short, <laughs> I'm short of making my 25 pound order of my chili. I'm going back to it. I've tried other things to make it easier for our cooking in the kitchen and I really miss the chili guys. So when I received a package from them, I was so excited, I teared up. Like we didn't film it, but I was, I was literally crying. So I'm gonna be using this chili paste and this chili paste. If you guys wanna learn how to make this for enchiladas, please let me know in the comments. All their information is gonna be in the description area where you guys can find it above the recipe um, with the link to their particular place. Now, if you guys wanna order the chili powder, I definitely suggest you guys call them over the phone. Armida's gonna answer, and please let her know that Views on the Road sent you, and yeah, that's what I'm gonna be using today for our chili paste. So I'm really excited. Thank you so much, Santa Cruz Chili. I love you guys. All right, friends, it's been about four minutes. Our tomatoes are pretty soft, and they're soft. If you get a, a little spoon that you're using, or whatever spoon, and just, you know, the little chunks, just press them down a bit, and you're gonna see that they're gonna fall apart, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add my Santa Cruz chili paste. As I mentioned, all of this will be in the description area. And we're gonna add our tomato sauce. If you don't wanna use tomato sauce, you're gonna have to use um, uh, extra tomato in here to give it that good flavor that we're looking for. And if you guys watch my mukbang where I did these puffy tacos, let me know in the comments. Do you guys remember how shy I was? I still am. <laughs> it's just that I got really comfortable with you guys. This is a lot of food and I only used one chicken breast. Oh yeah? Yeah, looks like a lot, right? It does. It is a lot. That was one juicy breast. Mm-hmm. You guys know how we keep it thick and juicy. Okay, friends, so I'm gonna continue to cook this for four minutes and then I'll see you guys shortly. Okay, this is gonna be optional. I need a little bit of cumin whenever I use chicken. I just feel it's comforting for me, especially when it's a little bit of a stewy uh, chicken. And I'm gonna tell you guys, you don't even have to just use this for a taco. You can use this over rice. You guys know what I'm gonna say. You can put it on your lettuce. Like, you can make your own dynamic thing with this. If you add it to a quesadilla, watch out, because you're gonna get addicted. <laughs> like someone said, the Views Club said in the comments, um, if you think you have enough cumin, you don't, go buy more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It really is. I love cumin, okay? I don't know, I just think it balances out that chicken flavor so well, mm -hmm. and it helps balance all the flavors, and I think it's, it's um, it's, what do, what do you call that, uh, Ayurvedic? Ayurvedic, like uh... Like it's healing, like kind of like turmeric. It's really good for like your joints. I can't remember which other one right now off the top of my head, because I'm hungry, but. <laughs> all right, friends, our chicken is ready, so what I'm gonna do now is this is optional because I know some of you guys feel that this is very soapy, but you guys know that I am like the queen of cilantro, like no, no joke. If there was a cilantro, a cilantro festival, I would be the queen there. So go ahead and pour some of the cilantro in there. Or coriander. Coriander? Wasn't well, it coriander when it's um, dried? I don't know, girl, I went to the store once and asked for cilantro and they looked at me like I was not from this planet and they were like, oh, coriander, let me get that for you. I'm like, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Coriander. Girl, I had to go for two. Did you know I had to go to three stores today to find my Anaheim pepper? Really? They're not supplying they, it anymore? I don't, I don't know, know if they're not supplying it at my local grocery store, but they didn't have any. And then um, for a while, we couldn't see any purple onions. 
Well, I know, I know why, but that's for the other channel. Yeah, that's for the other channel. Okay, so go ahead and give this a taste. I want you guys to taste the, the balance of the salt. If you need to add more salt, this would be your time, and take it little at a time. If you need to add more bullion on your end, take it a little bit, like a sprinkle at a time, not that much. You don't want this to be too, too salty, okay? So go ahead and taste that. And if you follow my lead, you know it's going to be perfect. So <laughs> let me set this to the side so I can get us started on our tortillas, okay? Okay, so I have our maseca. So you want to sprinkle just a little bit of salt and a little bit of garlic powder. If you don't have garlic powder, don't worry. You should still be able to do this, okay? You know, all the other doughs really mess with me, like with my hands and stuff. For The maseca one doesn't really bother me. No? No. It's very smooth. So I'm gonna slowly add the water. And in that cup, I had uh, one and a half cups of water so far. I'm gonna need more water. And I am using warm water, okay? When you use warm water, you end up softening, softening up your masa a lot nicer, I would say, than when using cold. Mm -hmm. Like you activate it? Yeah. With the warm? Yeah. Once you feel that it's all wet, and there's certain dry parts, only add like half a teaspoon, a teaspoon at a time, okay? Okay friends, what you're gonna find with this recipe is I just tested one and you wanna test one to make sure that it's flowing and it's uh, fluffing up the way that you want it, okay? So for my experience, I need to add just a little bit more water and it's just pretty much with my hands, just a little sprinkle. Ooh, I'm being dangerous today. Um, just so that it floats up properly, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys the water measurements that I use exact ingredients, but when you're using maseca, it's gonna be like, you have to learn how to work it, okay? So if it doesn't come out right, like for you, just work with it. You gotta use that uh, intuition. And your intuition on this one was that it was too dry? That it was too dry. Okay. Cause it also depends on, if you're using fresh masa, you definitely don't need to add water, you can just prop it right in, which is usually what we use, but today I'm using this one. Um, but I feel like I need a little bit more water, so. All right, so let me show you guys about the size that we're gonna do. It's about the size of a golf ball that you want for these tortillas, okay? Something like that. So now that I've showed you guys that part, don't quit on the masa, you got this. If you love making tacos, fresh tacos, just learn to work with it, don't quit right now. You got this. So let me go ahead and bring my little tortilla press and then get started on the whole process, okay? You gotta make sure your oil is hot and ready. Bubbling. And the reason for that is you want it a little bit hotter than usual because we want this to fry up and bubble up quick. Okay? What do we want it to do? Fry and bubble up quick. So let's go ahead and give this a go. I think I'm ready. Kinda help it float a little bit if you need to. Okay. As soon as you see it bubbles up, flip it quickly. And then you can start shaping it up a little bit. Once you get the bottom to have a little bit of a crust, it's gonna be easier for you to do this. Okay? Got it. You see, I didn't do that. I was being I was rushing, so I lifted a little bit of the soft part. That's why you want to make sure that the bottom and the top build a little bit of a crust. 
I'm showing all the good, the bad, the beautiful, and ugly on here. Because I want these to come out for you guys. And I think you guys appreciate it when I leave most of the stuff for you guys, you know? Okay. Oh, I see how the dough um, puffs up the masa. You see that? Yeah. And at this point, your masa is pretty much, it cooks quick when you fry it. And all you're waiting for is just for the color change. Let me flip so you guys can see where it wasn't uh, crusty enough and I touched it. That's what happens. But you just want to make sure you build up the crust on both ends, okay? And you definitely need two types of cucharas. It doesn't have to be the ones I'm using. And cucharas are like a cooking spoon type thing. So make it comfortable for oh, your home. You know what, Cloud? This is not going to work out if you're not talking to me. <laughs> so yeah, guys, we're going to keep doing this process and you guys can just observe as I go. You're going to see that when you take it out, there's going to be a little bit of the bubble that holds up the oil at the bottom. So you kind of want to place them to where they're like this a bit and you really drip all that oil out, okay? You guys can see the size of the tortilla there? Yep. All right, here we go again. Yeah, this one's doing really good. Yeah, I'm ready to flip it. You see how that one bubbled up? That's exactly what we're looking for. Nice. So you notice that your oil, the more, the more it gets hotter, the better it is for your, for your taco. And then you can kind of just guide it. Okay? That really is bomb.com. Una bombita. Una bombita. Ooh, that one went really thin, that taco. Look at that. Okay. So if you make them too thin, you're going to run into little um, things that pop like that, but it's still going to be good. Like the air bubbles? Yeah, the little air bubbles. That's how mm -hmm. thin and it just amassa good. Shout out to all the people from San Antonio. I know you guys love those puffy tacos. <laughs> yeah. That's where they originated from, right? Yep, the originators. Yeah, this one's pretty thin, so this one's ready to come out. You're right, it is that horse is it? It is, look at me. Just drip, drip. <laughs> All right. making a bigger one <laughs> all right guys I'm gonna make this last one and then I'll show you guys our next step make sure nobody's talking to you when you guys are doing this part okay okay Dar la vuelta. Ooh. make sure there's no kids around while you're frying it up Oh, nice. Yeah, once the oil gets hotter and you get the groove, it'll go by a lot faster for you. See? Yeah, I folded that one a little bit different. You see that? Mm hmm.
Thank you for my coconut water. You're welcome. Harmless harvest means expensive. It's good. Yeah, I really like that coconut water. Mm hmm Excuse my gulping if you can hear it. All right, here we go. Our last one. You gotta get it right in the middle. Nice. There you go. I'll be honest with you guys, this is one of the recipes that I don't like making. I love to watch my mom make it, and I, I love her way, her production for it. It's always like wow for me, which some of you guys are probably doing that to me, but you know, I'm the baby of my family, okay? <laughs> I love are. my mother's cooking. I remember when we were watching this in, uh, in Texas, it was on the Food Network, I think, the yeah. um, Puffy Tacos. Don't even get our, our friends started because they're gonna go they're gonna go at it with Bobby Flay. It was it yeah. Bobby Flay that way? Yeah, it was Bobby Flay. Okay. You know how our friends feel about Bobby Flay. I know, guys. <laughs> but um, I remember we told our mom like we really want to try that, but we, we don't want to go all the way to San Antonio. San Antonio, that twine <laughs> came out. <laughs> Do you think you can you know hook it up? But she sure did. She replicated the whole thing without even like stepping foot in the restaurant. Yeah. She's like, I know what that is. I know what this is. Yeah, I know how to make that. That's easy. Okay. So you guys saw how easy that one is. So if your first, second, third, and the other fourth ones don't work out that great, keep it going. You're going to get to the point where you find your groove, and that's what you need to do. Don't quit on me. you got to find that groove. And just to show you that once you find that groove, how easy it is, let me make another one for you, okay? Another one. Another one. And sometimes you're going to find that the little uh, masa ball that you're making has to be just right. Because if you go too big, too small, it's going to give you complications. And if you've never made this before, uh, save it for your weekend when you have your day off. That kind of stuff when you're trying to wow your family. Okay? Mm -hmm. Vamanos. I love the smell of like fried masa. Mm, that smells amazing in here. It's comforting. Good. All right. Let's see it fluffing. Bring it over. Ooh. Look at how light that little the the <laughs> the bubble is. It's mm -hmm. super light. Nice. Good. There we go. Shout out to the originator of these tacos. You have a lovely production. I don't know her name, I feel bad, but shout out to you, my lady. Mad respect. You know I've seen some of my stuff floating around in restaurants club. What? Like on post on IG. Really? Yeah. You have to send them to me. I will, I'll send them to you. I give myself credit when I see stuff like that. I mean, like, I know what's up. You guys already know I get heat for being the originator. <laughs> But that's what makes me happy when I see somebody else is enjoying it. I mean, there's no sense in like teaching people on the internet if you're gonna get upset at someone else using your recipe. Yeah, I think at the beginning it was just different because I'm like, oh my gosh, because I thought um, YouTube was like you give respect to other people, but now realizing like people don't do that, so now I'm just like grateful in a different way. Like I had a not all people. You have a lot of people. That oh no, not respect, not all of them, know? but there's just a lot. Like um, I think like social media, YouTube, that kind of stuff. It's oh, not okay. it's not credited in the same way like as real humans in real life and stuff. So I had to yeah. learn those ways and kind of just move it along from that that part like now I just I've grown a lot in the past um, even like six months you know you know I'm always working on myself girl 
Yeah, and you know they're your recipes because you adjust the ingredients based on the what's been handed down to you. Yeah. And it's unique to you, so you know it's it's your recipe. Yeah, I get a lot of people are like, oh, my, <laughs> my family doesn't make it that way. Yeah, like we're very much unique in that way. So... I'm just, I'm just grateful for the opportunity, yeah. you know, at this point. Yeah, I mean, we have the traditional recipe and we can show that, but then that doesn't show who you are and what you've learned. Yeah, that's true. Because you could, I think everybody can really take um, the basics and make it their own. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right, guys, we're set with our tortillas. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a, a little tour on how to shape this up and assemble it right here on my island. So I'll see you guys in just a minute. Okay friends, so what I did is I just went ahead and I put all my shredded chicken, my deliciously coated uh, shredded chicken. And the thing is that if you notice that your chicken gets a little bit dry, just add a little bit more broth, mix it around because you want it a little bit soupy. You don't want it to be completely dry because we're not using uh, salsa for this because the salsa is already in your chicken. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of lettuce and you can add as much lettuce as you want. You know how, to, how you like your tacos. And for mine, I like them very simple with my lettuce because the chicken itself and the taco is just a star. Okay. I'm going to sprinkle some of my uh, queso fresco. If you don't like queso fresco, use a cheese that makes you happy or you can keep it out. And I'm going to use some of my pickled onions. I like a lot of pickled onions, so. All right, guys, I know you're, your mouth is watering, you're excited. Now we're gonna go ahead and taste these delicious puffy tacos. One thing I am gonna tell you is that I already fed my family, so you wanna serve these tacos right when they come out. Start serving them to your family because the hotter, the better, but you guys know me. I'm a little nasty like that, but I'll eat them. <laughs> Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm happy. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed these tacos. Please come back and let me know how they worked out for you. If you couldn't eat the taco, you just made the, the chicken portion of it. Let me know how you enjoy that flavor because it is bomb.com. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you like the way that I'm giving you the recipe, please make sure to subscribe, click that bell that pops up for notifications, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios!